So at this point, we've looked at line integrals. We had a, we, our typical example was we had a force field and you integrate force with respect to position um, and you take the dot product of the force field with d of the position vector and you get work. Um, and that's our primary motivation for looking at line integrals. And you calculate them, the definition, you parameterize the, the path that the object is moving along, and you, um, well, and then you stick that into the vector field and dot with the derivative of the parameterized path times dt, and you integrate from t0 to t1. Great. That's how you calculate line integrals from the definition. And then in the last section, we looked at conservative vector fields, and, and we found that if your vector field is conservative and you have a potential function little f for your vector field, then the calculation of line integrals becomes very simple. Um, in fact, the line integral from one point to another doesn't depend on the path from that point, from the initial point to the final point. All that matters is the, the vector field and the final point and the initial point. And you take your potential function, you stick in the the final point, and you subtract what you get at the initial point. Great. That's if you have a conservative vector field. In this section, we want to look at vector fields that aren't conservative, vector fields in R2 that aren't conservative. And we'd still like to look at certain kinds of line integrals. What kinds? Well, integrals around closed curves. Now, as we saw in the last section, if you've got a conservative vector field, that's the same as saying that all integrals around closed curves, curves that come back to themselves, are zero. Now that's equivalent to being conservative. We also saw that if you have a conservative vector field, the two-dimensional curl is zero, and I will remind you what the two-dimensional curl is. So for conservative vector fields, the two-dimensional curl is zero, and integrals around closed curves are, is, are zero. And so you might wonder if those two zeros are connected, so that if the two-dimensional curl isn't zero but is something else, can you, does that tell you anything about integrals around closed curves? And the answer is yes. And the big, the big result is called Green's theorem. And it relates the two-dimensional curl to integrals around, to line integrals around closed curves. Um, so let's start. So suppose you've got some vector field F. So I'm just going to, I skip a lot of writing a lot of qualifiers, but we need for this to be a continuously differentiable vector field on an open subset of R2. So, so well, maybe I won't skip writing the words. Continuously, I'll abbreviate. Continuously differentiable vector field. And then we want to take, and here, now there are a lot of words. This is a, I want a simple, closed, oriented, mm -hmm, piecewise regular curve. Okay, what do all these words mean? So simple means that this curve doesn't intersect itself except to be closed. So it starts someplace, it ends at the same place, and it doesn't intersect itself any place else. Closed means it does come back to itself. Oriented. I'm going to orient counterclockwise. Right now I'm going to orient counterclockwise. And in Green's theorem, you think of this as the positive orientation, counterclockwise. This is so if we were oriented clockwise, that would be the negative orientation. Um, piecewise regular, oh, that's a technical condition, you know what it means. We we parameterize this by parameterizations that are piecewise regular. Great. Um, it's a theorem then, that <laughs> it's kind of obvious, that this separates all of space into two pieces. There's an inside region, a region inside the curve that I'll call R, and a region outside that I won't call anything. Um, 
we can call this curve, it's, we can call this curve C, but in fact, it's, it's kind of classical to write this round D that we use for partial derivatives, and now let it mean the boundary of R. This is the boundary of R with its boundary of the region R. And we mean it as an oriented curve, and we mean it's given its positive orientation. So counterclockwise, if we wrote negative the boundary of R, that would mean the negatively oriented boundary, which would mean it goes clockwise. Great. So this is our setup. And the question is, can we say anything about the line integral around C, or so around the boundary of R? And yes, we have Green's theorem. Green's theorem that relates the line integral around the closed curve with the two-dimensional curl. Green's theorem, in this situation, the line integral around the boundary of R, f dot dr, is the double integral over the region R of the two-dimensional curl. So I'll, I should write you know, f, f is a vector field, it has one R2, on an open subset of R2, it has two component functions, which I'll call p and q. In the two-dimensional curl, you take the partial derivative of the second thing, which you kind of think of as in the y position, but it's not, because y is a variable over here. But the second thing, you take its partial derivative with respect to x, and you subtract the partial derivative of the first thing with respect to the second variable, and you integrate with respect to area. This is Green's theorem. Here's the two-dimensional curl right here. So the case of, the, of a conservative vector field is when this is zero. Well, then this double integral would be zero, and it tells you that line integrals around closed curves are zero. Well, yeah, right? That's what, that's what we said for conservative vector fields. Um, because R is the inside of, a, of a, one of these simple closed-oriented curves, R is simply connected, which means that, as I told you last time in the previous lecture, that, oh, yes, the vector field F being conservative is equivalent to this being zero on a simply connected region. So yeah, this being zero tells you this is zero. All that, you know, all those things are zero for conservative vector fields. But Green's theorem says, oh, okay, maybe this isn't zero, but, but we still know how to calculate the line integral around closed curves in terms of the two-dimensional curl, but it's not so simple anymore. All right. Um, I want to just look at a couple of examples of this, and then I want to give you an idea of why Green's theorem is true, because it, it looks a little magical. All right, but let's look at a couple of quick examples. So our first example, f, let's let f be the vector field for y plus the natural log of 1 plus x squared comma 6x plus e to the y sine y. Um, we'll think of this as a force field, or we'll assume this is a force field, so that's in newtons. Assume x and y are in meters. And we'll calculate the work done along the closed path And maybe instead of words, I'll just draw a picture of our closed path. I'm going to start at 0, 0. 
I'm going to go to one zero. Then I'm going to go up here to zero two. And then back down, back down to zero zero. So that's my curve, my oriented curve C. I don't just mean this piece, the whole thing. All right, what is the work done by the force field as you move around this closed curve C? Well, it's given by the line integral. All right, the work. as we know, is given by this line integral. But now we, you, what you could do is parameterize each of these three line segments separately and calculate the line integral from the definition. You could, but when you're looking at integrating vector fields, you try to apply your theorems like, oh, maybe this vector field's conservative, and then we would know, well, pff, this line integral is zero because it's the integral around a closed curve, but maybe the vector field's not conservative. But then you can still use Green's theorem to help you calculate the line integral. It's, yes, you could do it by definition. Um, it might be a little problematic because the functions look messy, um, but you'd rather try Green's theorem. And this is the tip, a typical use of Green's theorem. It's the line integral that you want, the integral around the closed curve, and the area, the integral over the region is simpler, and you'd rather do that. So we're going to use Green's theorem. We're going to call the region inside the curve C. We're going to call this R. What, this curve is already oriented counterclockwise, so that oriented curve C is the positively oriented boundary of R. And Green's theorem tells us that this line integral is the same as the double integral over, over R the double integral over r of q of x minus p of y dA, where q of x, uh, sorry, where q is this, q sub x means take its partial derivative with respect to x, p sub y, well p is this function, p sub y means take the partial derivative of this with respect to y. So what do we get? Well, you can just look at this, the partial derivative of q, and so this, This is P. So the partial derivative of Q with respect to X, well, that's certainly easy. It's just 6. So this is 6. And the partial derivative of P with respect to Y, well, this doesn't depend on Y. That's just 4. So we get minus 4. So you integrate the constant 2 over the region. Well, you can just pull the 2 out, so you get 2 times the area of the region. The region is just a triangle. Um, so you get two times the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is one half the base times the height. Well, the base times the height is two. Half of that's one. So you get two times one. So let me put this is the area of the triangle. So we get two units, joules. That's one of the simplest applications of, of Green's theorem. Uh, the two-dimensional curl, the Q of X minus P of Y isn't zero like you'd get in a conservative vector field. But had the vector field been conservative, it's not like we wasted any time. Then we would have gotten a zero here, and we would have gotten zero for the, the line integral around the closed curve because the vector field would be conservative. Um, Fine, but the vector field's not conservative, but the two-dimensional curl is a constant. Well, that's like the second easiest case. Okay, it's not zero, but it's some non-zero constant. And then you just can pull that constant out, and you get that constant times the area of the region. So we got two joules. All right, well, let's do one where the two-dimensional curl is not constant. So, example, V equals 
6x squared y plus 2y cubed plus the inverse tangent of x x cubed plus 3xy squared plus e to the y. And our region and our curve, I want to start at minus 3, 0. This is minus 3. I want to go along the circle of radius 3 centered at the origin um, clockwise. So go up here to 3, and then I want to keep going clockwise around the circle of radius 3 centered at the origin to, to 3, 0, and then I want to go back that way. So this is my curve C. All right. And what we, what we want to calculate is the line integral around C of v dot dr. Okay, so that's what we do. Um, again, you, you call this, we'll call this region bounded by the curve r, but notice that uh, that, that boundary curve is not oriented counterclockwise. It's oriented clockwise um, so that this C is not what we'd call the boundary of R, because if we write the boundary of R, we mean with its positive orientation. This boundary is ne or this curve C is negative the boundary of R. Right? We, by boundary of R, we mean with the, its positive orientation, counterclockwise. So negative is there present to indicate we're going clockwise, not counterclockwise. So this is the integral around negative the boundary of R of d dot dr. Well, that's just negative the integral of the boundary that it's negative the integral over the boundary of v dot dr. And now we apply Green's theorem to that part. So we get that this is negative the double integral over r of q sub x, the partial derivative of q with respect to x, minus the partial derivative of p with respect to y, dA. Okay, so we need those partial derivatives. Uh, the partial derivative of q with respect to x, we get 3x squared plus 3y squared. The partial derivative of p with respect to y, we get 6x squared plus 6y squared. DA, um, you get 3x squared minus 6x squared, 3y squared minus 6y squared. So we get a minus 3 times x squared plus y squared. When we pull out the minus 3, you end up with 3 times, so minus minus 3, positive 3, times the double integral over R of x squared plus y squared DA. This is what we need to calculate. Now, I'll say it again that well, we are going to do this, and it won't be bad. But I want to say again that what other options do you have? Well, this certainly isn't a conservative vector field. We didn't find the curl was 0. It was, um, it was well, this part's the curl. It was negative 3x squared plus y squared. It's not 0. Uh, it's not a conservative vector field. But you could calculate this line integral by definition. You could parameterize this part of the curve, parameterize this part of the curve, and calculate the line integral from the definition by plugging in the parameterization, dotting with the derivative of the parameterization, integrating. Um, but, you know, the functions look a little ugly, and we expect this to be nicer. Well, of course it's nicer because it's, it's rigged, because I want to do this example, but um, this will be nicer, and hopefully you see that it is we will switch into polar coordinates. Maybe we haven't done an integral in polar coordinates in a while, but the region is very nice in polar coordinates. x squared plus y squared is r squared in polar coordinates. This integral, this, two, two, this double integral, this two-dimensional integral, is very easy.
So in fact, I think I'll fit it in right here. You get three times the integral of x squared plus y squared is r squared. dA is r dr d theta. We need to integrate over this, the inside of this half circle. So theta needs to go from 0 to pi. Oops, theta goes from 0 to pi. R needs to go from 0 to 3 out to the radius of the circle. And so we need to calculate that double integral. OK, I guess it won't really fit there. But. All right, so we've got three times the integral from 0 to pi, the integral from 0 to 3 of r cubed r d theta. What? r cubed dr d theta. I don't know what I just said. So you get three times the integral from 0 to pi. That inside integral is r to the fourth over 4. Evaluate it from 0 to 3, and then you still integrate with respect to theta. So we get 3 to the 4th over 4 times this, or 3 to the 5th over 4 times the integral from 0 to pi of d theta, so times pi. That. Of course, if you calculated the line integral from definition by parametrizing the two pieces of the, of the curve, um, and you do it right, <coughs> this is what you get. But this was fairly painless, and it's an example of Green's theorem. All right, those two examples are, are just typical examples of how Green's theorems use. You want to calculate the line integral around a closed curve. You, <coughs> by definition, it looks a little difficult. Um, the regions look nice to integrate over. So you apply Green's theorem, and instead of directly integrating the, the line integral around the closed curve, you integrate the two-dimensional curl over the, over the region in the xy plane. Um, I want to give you some idea of why Green's theorem is true. It looks a little, a little, I don't know, a little magical. I know I already said that, but. And what I'm going to do is show you why Green's theorem is true when you integrate over a rectangle. And then maybe I'll let you read in the book how you pass from one rectangle to kind of shapes of various regions. It's by putting together lots of little rectangles and parts cancel out. You, can, you take limits, of course. Um, I want to go a rectangle that So suppose we've got a rectangle, R. So R is the, this filled-in rectangle with boundary components C1, C2, C3, C4. I want to show you why Green's theorem is true when you integrate over such a rectangle. And again, we're going to have a vector field F, and we'll assume its component functions are called or we'll call its component functions, P and Q. And the first thing I'm going to look at, and in fact, it's probably the only thing, and I'll just tell you that you do the other parts in a similar way, is first, I want to look at the line integral around C1 plus C3 of F dot dr. And I'm going to write f dot dr in one of its equivalent ways, which I don't write terribly often, but it's p dx plus q dy. Because dr is dx comma dy, and when you take the dot product, you get p times dx plus q times dy. So I want to look at this part. This is the integral. This is the line integral that it gets this part, it gets the 
the line integral along C1 and the line integral along C3, which goes that way, and we'd still have to add the line integral along C2 and C4 to get the whole integral around the closed curve, um, which is what we're trying to show via Green's theorem, or which we're trying to show to make Green's theorem correct. We're trying to show that that's the double integral of the two-dimensional curl over, the, over, the, over R. All right. So, what do you do? Well, first of all, notice that along C1 and C3, the, the y-coordinate doesn't change. Here the y-coordinate is constantly b. Here the y-coordinate is constantly b plus k. The y-coordinate doesn't change, so the, this dy is zero, and in the line integral you get no contribution from that part. So we just get So we just get that the integral of f dot dr along this oriented curve is the line integral of just p dx. Okay. Well, this is the integral of p dx along c1 plus the integral of p dx along C3, and then what are those? All right, um, let me draw my rectangle again where, so that we can see it over here. So what's the integral of p dx along c1? Well, I mean, that's just the same as, oh, uh, your y-coordinate is fixed at b, and your x-coordinate goes from a to a plus h. So it's the integral as x goes from a to a plus h of p of, and your y-coordinate is fixed at b. So your x-coordinate's varying, but your y-coordinate's fixed at b. So it's this. What's What's this integral? Well, it's now your y coordinate's fixed at b plus k, and your x coordinate goes from a plus h to a. So your x coordinate goes from a plus h to a, and your y coordinate is fixed at b plus k. And so you get this. Okay, <laughs> it may not look like we're getting any place good, but we are. Um, integrating from a plus h to a, you know, is the same as you negate the integral from a to a plus h. And now I'm going to pull out a minus sign, and I'm going to lump these now, and then both integrals go from a to a plus h, so I can combine the integrals. I get minus the integral from a to a plus h of p of x comma b, comma b plus k minus, right, I pulled a minus sign out of both of these, so I have to put a minus sign in here p of x, b, dx. Let me put in, I want some more. Um, I want some more brackets. Let's see, I've got square brackets. Actually, maybe I'll just leave that big minus out there and put some square brackets here. All right, so we've got this. And <laughs> we want to rewrite this. Well, that stuff inside the square brackets is exactly the integral as y goes from b to b plus k of the partial derivative of p with respect to y, dy. I claim the stuff in the square brackets here is the same as stuff in the square brackets here. Why? Because what do you get 
when you calculate the partial derivative of p with respect to y integrated with respect to dy. You produce an antiderivative of this with respect to y. Well, that's p. That's p, except you could add an arbitrary function of x, but that's not going to matter because we plug in y equals b plus k and subtract what you get when y is b. You get exactly this, right? An antiderivative, we can use any of them we want, is p. And then you put in, into p of x, into p of x, y, you put in that y is b plus k, and you subtract what you get when y is b. So this is the same as this. But if you look at this, this is the integral, negative, the integral from a to a plus h, integral from b to b plus k, well, that's the integral over the whole rectangle of the partial derivative of p with respect to y times dy dx. That's dA. So what we just concluded was that this part, this part of the line integral, is negative the double integral over our region of p sub y dA. Or I can put the minus sign back inside if I want this. Well, that's half of Green's theorem for this rectangle. Now you check. I'll, I leave it to you to check. That by analogy, what you get, or by analogy, you do the analogous thing to what we just did. If you integrate over C2 plus C4, I'm claiming if you do exactly what we just did, but switch the roles of x and y, and then there'll be a minus sign that's different, but you get that the, the line integral along C2 plus C4 of f dot dr is the double integral over r of q of x dA. And then, of course, you get Green's theorem by adding those two lines. When you add this and this, you get the line integral along C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4. That's the line integral around the closed curve. Um, and it equals this plus this, which is the double integral over R of Q of X minus P of Y dA. So that's how you prove Green's theorem when you integrate over a rectangle. As I said, when you integrate over something more complicated, what happens is you look at sticking smaller rectangles, attaching smaller rectangles to this. And when you do, what happens if you orient counterclockwise every time is there's cancellation that goes on. And that's what gives you the general Green's theorem. Because the double integrals over the regions just add. But why do you end up with just the integral over the boundary and not some of the stuff in between? And it's because exactly because this part would cancel out this part because this orientation goes that way and this orientation goes that way. So if you jam that rectangle on there, yeah, you just end up with the line integral around the boundary curve again. So that's how the proof of Green's theorem goes. You prove it for rectangles. Then you prove that because you always orient counterclockwise when you stick rectangles together, the kind of in-between lines cancel out. The in-between contributions to the line integral cancel out. And you're just left with the, the line integral along the boundary of your more complicated region. And of course, the the, integral, the integrals over the, the plane regions are like R1 and R2 over the, rec, the solid or the filled in rectangles. Those just add. So that, <clears throat> yeah, you can do this for any number of, any finite number of rectangles stuck together. And then if you've got a, a weirder region, you chop it up into little rectangles, you take limits, and you get Green's theorem. All right. Um, Green's theorem is the first of our kind of our theorems about integrating vector fields that's, um, that relates an integral in kind of one dimension, like a one-dimensional integral along a curve, to a two-dimensional integral over the area inside the curve. We're also going to have, we'll have two other theorems that have that kind of flavor. We're going to have the divergence theorem, which relates integrating over some solid region in space. We'll relate that to integrating um, over the surface of that solid region. 
And then we'll have something that's basically a Green's theorem in space, where you have a surface in space and the bounding curve, and you want to relate um, the line integral along the bounding curve to some integral over the surface. Um, those are far more complicated than Green's theorem. Green's theorem is a good warm-up.